Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Professor L again. We are talking about structures for the last couple of videos. And um, I hope you remember that especially carbon, they can have many different shapes without changing the feature of each carbon and those are called conformations and you can draw them from different perspective in various ways one of them was uh, Newman like this to analyze whether this is the best angle you can have or you can draw them in Fisher something like this. Not putting this carbon in the center, these two uh, horizontal lines coming at you at the sidelines and this group going away from you so goes to the top with the three carbons and these two carbons going away from you as well so you can put them uh, in the bottom of the fissure. Also you can form various sides of the rings. You can form a ring with these three but you have to distort it a lot and you can make a four membered ring with a less distortion but still lots of eclipsed and uh, semi-eclipsed and uh, you know, sigma bond being bent and angle of the carbons distorted from 109 to nearly 90 and five membered ring which is like a half of the um, chair form ish half of the chair form ish without much of a, a string it can be formed and six membered ring we spend quite a bit of time discussing or different confirmation of it but one thing you have to uh, understand from the previous video is that whenever you try to make a bond if this tip and this tip was hydrogen they cannot form a bond right away because the hydrogen already has two shared electron thus it cannot accept any more electron from the other hydrogen so they would repelled they would be repelled by those electrons so in order to form a bond you have to remove at least one hydrogen from each carbon then those carbons can be either radicals meaning this carbon has besides those three pairs of electrons could have a one electron in the p orbital so uh, the carbon is neutral because out of this pair of electron with the hydrogen one belongs to carbon and out of this bond with the carbon one belongs to this and the other belongs to that so only one and the other here same way so three belongs to this and the radical single electron belongs to this carbon therefore the carbon is neutral likewise this carbon is neutral however when those two single electrons come closer they like to be shared so they can form a sigma bond here or the other way is you can form a bond ionically you can have one of the carbon having both of the electron meaning the carbon is negatively charged because two electron here belongs to this carbon and there are three from the three um, bonds so five therefore it's negative then this carbon must have only six electron in order to accept two electron here and share them and when you look at it you have only 
six electron total for now. So this must be positively charged. Then you can go ahead and form a bond. There. These are the two cases you can form bond. Radical, radical in the p orbital. They can share the electron and form a bond. In order to form bond, you know you have to twist this bond and this bond so you can bring two p orbitals to each other. Right now, it is shown as if the p orbital here, the hole, let's just say hole is the p orbital, and they cannot form bond with the one electron in each p orbital. But you have to turn and face them to share. Then you can form bond here. And also the other case was the carbon was negative and this carbon was positive with an empty p orbital and you also have to spin them accordingly to form a bond. So we talked about forming small ring like a triangular to the cyclohexane like a six membered ring and this side you have high strain meaning lots of repulsions and unstable bondings so high potential energy so it doesn't want to stay like that they want to open up and as you go from here to that you have low strain almost no strain at all and it has very low potential energy and very stable and we saw some of the forms here are less stable than the other then um, stability wise it increased this way however in order to form the ring it takes longer time with a less probability as you can see and I showed it in previous video you have to fold a lot of bonds in a not very stable you know uh, conformation like a gauche so you can clip on and form a bond so it's unfavorable in terms of the kinetics excuse me but in terms of the thermodynamics it's favored because it's becoming more stable and some video later on I should discuss bigger rings like 7 and 8 I can show you like 7 like this And you can draw something like this. You know, the uh, chair form was like that for a sixth membered. And you can draw seventh member ring, something like that. And of course, like both form here. Excuse me. You can also draw this thing having different conformation for the seven membered ring and of course the eight membered ring can be drawn in various conformation like a boat form or like a chair form or even more or using one more carbon on the cyclohexane six membered ring you can make the boat form 
then you can fix the boat form using the additional carbon something like that if I draw it it should be boat this way if you turn it it'll look like boat right then additional carbon was on a pseudo axial connected to another pseudo axial like this using this carbon no this was a boat without this carbon here if you disregard that one it is boat and that's called the bicyclo compound and you can create another bicyclo compound from the boat now you have a two carbons connecting the bridge head over here so you can also draw that using the boat with the two carbons and you can you can use one of these cyclo um, heptane to make this kind of a bicyclo compound like that and so on also other variation to this uh, chair form if you add four more carbon you can make up a two six membered ring using these four additional carbons so if you show it you can draw one and then second one start from one carbon two three and the four carbons and you have two chair forms connected and you can create different uh, conformer and different isomers and finally if I connect four more carbons not on the two different carbons here and here but to one carbon say to this cyclohexane six membered I added four carbons on this carbon then you can create molecule like this and you can see the two rings are merged on that carbon this is called a spiral compound so you can see this and this 90 degree between this plane and this plane spiral structures so all other uh, various rings and more complex uh, structures will be discussed later in separate video all right so we have talked a lot about how to build molecule in various forms and why they choose a certain uh, conformation and structures that was obviously due to lower the potential energy with a maximum attraction and the minimum repulsion then after forming different chemicals you need to compare them and see what changes you have so one of, one of the terms that comes in this um, comparison and recognition is isomer so in order to find out the isomerism the relationship between the compounds you first have to uh, check whether the compounds you're comparing have same formula so as you look at the real model it's quite easy you have different atom in it so you right away know they are completely different compound and we need to 
get more familiarized and feel comfortable working with just the drawing because you need to read the papers and the books. So when you have compounds to compare, first thing you ask is, question number one, do they have the same formula? Let's assume that you are comparing these three. Do they have the same formula? Well, some of them are easy. Like you see here, the ring with the six carbons. Then those have two groups. So they must be same formula, right? Let's uh, get into a little more detail about this formalism. This condensed line angle drawing, again telling you that these are all carbons, then depends on number of the bond shown, you can figure out how many hydrogens you have. So this carbon bound to one carbon, so three, so CH3, CH3. And that, 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 that has two connections to the neighbors. So that must have a two additional hydrogens. That one has three connections to the neighboring atoms. So there must be one hidden hydrogen each here and here. So two methyls, two CH3s, two CHs. Then one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four CH2s. So same thing. But when you compare these two to this guy, it's not as easy. So you actually have to figure out the formula. So if you write out, this is a C8, 6, 7, 8, H, 3 and the 3, 6, 8, 9, 10, 12, 14, 16. There, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, oh, same carbon. Then you have three carb hydrogens here, 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 here. There are five, two for five of them, so 15. Then one here, 16. One there, 17. One there, 18. You see, you have two more hydrogens. That probably is because like we discussed earlier, in order to form a ring structure, you should lose one hydrogen from each carbons as a radical or ionic negative positive carbons. Then you are able to connect. If you have hydrogen here and here, they are not able to form a ring. So that's the difficult things when you work with the condensed line drawing. So you have to be very careful about. So these are isomers, but that's not. That's completely different compound. All right. So when you said, yeah, they are the same formula, then you can move on. But if you said they are different formula compound, then they are different compound. So when you have the same formula, they're not still isomer. They're, they're ha they have a chance to be same compound. All right, how about these three compounds? So you compare this first one in the Newman to the second one, the Fisher projection. What do you think? Don't forget, first you have to see they have the same formula. Fortunately, they're quite similar. So you have a one methyl group here and here, CH3s. Then you have a one carbon and behind carbon, so two more carbons. Then the attached group 
groups atoms are OH, F, three hydrogens. OH, F, three hydrogens. Yes, same formula. Are they same? In other words, are they superimposable? When you overlay them, do they match? Well, this case is easy because F is on this carbon with a methyl. OH is on the other carbon with a H2. But here the connection is completely different. So you have a different connectivity here. So they're not superimposable, so they can be isomer. And obviously they are also in the relationship of connectivity difference. Then what about the last two? These two. They look awfully similar. So I hope you can imagine them and match. So you can pause the video and take a time and try to imagine. Okay, I hope you did. And let's see, you can do it mentally. If you cannot fully imagine the whole molecule, that's fine. You can do step by step. Just remember that the Fisher projection is done with the groups eclipsed. Also, those vertical groups are away from you and those horizontal lines are coming at you. Currently, you are looking at it from the top and the metal is going away from you. So if you flip this molecule in the Newman this way, then it, you can imagine the methyl group will go away from you, right? So it's going to be there. Then after 90 degree turning, fluorine and hydrogen is coming towards you to the camera. Then they can be on the horizontal line. Then they are in the right position, F hydrogen same thing so first carbon matched perfectly then when you look at the second carbon here the OH is at the bottom and you know that should be away from you but there it's not so you have to turn the OH moving to the under methyl group then it's gonna go away from you so when you flip it 90 degree then the OH underneath the methyl in your imagination is going to go into the table and that's perfect for this position. Then those two hydrogen matches perfectly. So they are same compound. To help you to understand, let me introduce this model again. You need to learn this quickly. So you see they are matching, right? The carbon behind holding OH and the front carbon holding blue ball F and also the methyl group here. So if I turn this way and turn the OH this way and flip it 90 degree and you can see the methyl group and the uh, OH is going away from you. So they are on the top and bottom and the flowing that way, hydrogen this way then the two hydrogens right there so they are the same compound they're superimposable all right so you got the compounds to compare the first question was ask whether they have the same formula then you said yes they do then you continue. Then the second question is, are they same compound? You try to overlap them and see they are same. Then, when they are not same compound, then they are in isomer relationship. Then you ask third question to those pairs with the same formula a different compound. Not the same compound, I mean. So the third question is, do they have same connectivity? 
that sounds familiar. Here, when we go back to the previous example, you have these two having different connectivity, meaning say the fluorine is connected to the carbon with the OH and CH3 on it but here the fluorine is connected to the carbon with the CH3 and the hydrogen so the connectivity is different therefore these having same formula not superimposable having different connectivity is in this isomerism relationship which is constitutional isomer or regio isomer all right so again from the beginning you need to get used to this first you check the formula then with the same formula you check whether they are same compound if not they are isomers then you ask and then they have quite different structure they look different even when you just look at it, you can notice almost. And they are called constitutional or regio isomer, isomer right here. But when you have a same connectivity, they are called the stereo isomers. And the difference is very small. Sometimes it's not easy to catch, especially when they are shown in different drawings. So you need to practice a lot. So, among the stereoisomers with a very small difference in structure, you have conformational stereoisomers. You know what that is. The chemical, any chemical with a single bond, they can have a free rotation and create different conformation. And this rotation is limited by repulsion with the given temperature. So when you drop the temperature, you may not be able to turn anymore so you can separate the conformation like this from the conformation like that so they can be separated and measure different properties or they can behave differently toward the different enzymes and things like that so those isomers in a special condition you call conformational stereoisomer and on the paper you can see them like this right gauche and t things like that then the rest of the stereoisomers are optical stereoisomer they have some special optical activity that i will explain later in the video so for those you have to ask, are those two similar, very similar looking structures? Are those molecules mere images of each other? When you say yes, then they are enantiomers of each other. If not, then they are diastromers. Later, when you compare the molecule, you re realize that diastromer, they are even more similar than enantiomers. Enantiomers are completely opposite. However, surprisingly, the enantiomers have a very similar properties. In fact, they have all the same physical chemical properties, melting point, boiling point, solubility, all these physical properties, or the reaction SN2, SN1, whatever the reaction you're going to learn later, they show same reactivity. Only difference is their interaction and the reaction to the other form of enantiomer. One of the main um, difference is when they interact with enzymes. One enantiomer interacts perfectly well with the enzyme, while the other one, which is extremely similar, shows no interaction almost with the same enzyme. But the diastromer with a more similarity, but since they are not mirror image, they have a completely different properties. All right, so let's com compare these two structures. Do you see any relationship?
So what do you do first? You check if the formula is the same. And you can check easily because they all have the same um, groups on two carbons. Then you have to check whether they are same compound or not. So when you turn this Newman projection circle, imagine my fist is the circle this way. Imagine that. You can pause as many times as you want. If you turn, in fact, this one go into the board, I mean into the table, so it comes here. And the CH3 after 90 degree, degree flip, it's gonna come there, OH there as well as other three groups here, so they are same compound. They're not even um, isomers. Mm -hmm. People do forget asking these questions and just compare whether they are mirror image or not after turning this uh, molecule and draw the Newman projection or whatever um, you know your favorable drawing might be then you place the mirror image and say oh they're not mirror image so they are diastromer and that's the one of the common mistakes you have to ask them sometimes it's noticeable easily sometimes it's not so you have to always practice asking the question in the sequence then what is the um, enantiomer how does it look like well, you can create an antiomer from both of them. Well, also you can create the mirror image from many different places. You can place a mirror here and create another neural projection here. And you can put mirror here and create the neural projection, which I will try. I hope you can follow me. This is the mirror image of the methyl group here. And this right the hydrogens going away so in the mirror it goes away on the left CH3O come toward the mirror and the CH3 so that's the enantiomer how about this one you can do it from here so let's try from this side well you have the carbon then here you have a hydrogen sticking up then coming out is CH3, going in is CH2, CH3, and OH, then OCH3, and the methyl. So that's your enantiomer. Well, some cases, they give you the Newman projection say they gave you this because you have already the answer you can follow me easily um, CH3, CH2 there then um, CH3 here then OH here over here they put OCH3 then they put CH3 here and I did this you know what I just did, right? I just turned the carbon here clockwise from this perspective by 120 degree. So these are basically same compound, but they ask you to compare these. Unless they tell you the confirmation is frozen, confirmation of change is frozen, you have to turn the molecule to match this one to find out whether they are same compound or one of the isomers. So in this case, this is a mirror image after turning. It goes there and that we find them as enantiomers. So be careful. Then how do you make the uh, diastromer? Well, the diastromer should not be same compound. So, um, I should be careful. They should have the same connectivity. I don't want to change these two groups or these two groups. Because then, 
does this group is not going to be on this carbon anymore right so connectivity change then that you are creating by doing that um, the um, visual isomers so what I would do is if I switch these two and those two at the same time you get actually enantiomer let's try if I draw this and I put methyl group here or CH3 there I switched it so what do you think they are let's imagine if you flip this molecule this way what happens I hope you can imagine but let me just draw it for you if I flip OH goes up, H come down. Then as I flip, and CH3 go in. Then when you compare these two with the mirror, do you see them as a mirror image? Indeed, they are in antiomer. So you don't want to f switch the both. So that gives you an idea. Oh, the nature of the diastromer is one of the carbon groups switched. The other one should be kept same. Then they have the same formula, not the same molecule because you made some switching. Then they are not superimposable. Then the connectivity wise, they are same because you didn't move a group from one carbon to the other but they're not mirror image therefore they are diastromers okay I hope you noticed that when the conformational stereoisomer forms when you turn the single bonds and that doesn't destroy any structure so it sort of is changing the physical shape and the changes are affecting probably uh, less however in this optical stereochemical um, isomers as you have just seen you switch the groups on the same carbon it maybe is a smaller change in in a way but you have to break a bond and the switch then reform the bond so it's actually chemical change so it happens during the chemical reactions so conformational change and the con the optical change they are from the different type of uh, uh, changes so the change that happens when you switch the group on the same carbon is called configuration compared to the conformation that's happening when you turn the single bond configuration you break the bond and reform so we give name for the configurations you know when you have a conformation gauche anti chair boat these names are given so for configuration we also have to give name to distinguish them so first we have to uh, learn about chiral center chiral center is central atom it's not always carbon but it can be anything that holds four different things four different things then we say that's chiral center then to give the name you number the atoms directly attached to the central atom such as this going CH3 OH 
and CH2, CH3, for example. Uh, excuse me. Like that. So, this group here has carbon and three hydrogen, and the two carbons and five hydrogens, but we only label them with the atom that's directly attached to the central atom. Then, you label from the heavier atom. So in this case, chlorine gets one, oxygen gets two, and there are two same carbons. Then you go and compare next atoms on this versus on this carbon. So here, you have three hydrogens. There, you have carbon attached to the carbon and two hydrogens, and you put the heavier atom first. Then you compare from the beginning, first atom, or oh, you already have a winner, the carbon is bigger, so this group gets number three, and that one gets four. Okay, next step to give the name of the configuration, the absolute configuration, is holding the molecule, or looking at the molecule, with the number four away from you. So, if you have your model in front of you, you have to turn around because number four is on the paper. Or, the way I recommend is you stand over here, then looking down, you're here, and looking down this way, then you have a number four away from you. After that, in the 3D space, not on the paper, you connect number 1 to the number 2, 2 to the 3, and 3 to the 1 in 3 dimension. I hope you see this one, OH, coming out in the space, and the CH2, CH3 into the uh, table. And when you connect from here, you can notice, in this case, luckily, the circle is the same as in the three dimension and it going, it's going to the uh, clockwise so when it's going clockwise you give R if it's anti-clockwise you give S okay look at the example I did it for you to save time you can pause and look at it and assign the uh, configuration Okay, I hope you got the point. These have awfully similar structure. And I labeled them same way we did over here. And I connected the numbers from the location where you see number four away from. Then, uh, since on the paper it goes counterclockwise, people would assign it as an S configuration, but the absolute configuration was an R, because in real life, the chemical has OH coming up, so number one on the paper, the solid line CL, coming up, and number two to the three is going down under the table that's already clockwise from the person standing over here. So it should be R, configuration. Okay, here I created the mirror image of this one. Then when you try to assign the absolute configuration, what would you give? The same problems here. One, two, three, if you want to connect. It looks like it's R, but from the person who look at the molecule from this location, in order to see number four away from, it's this way, and that person's right here. And number one is on the paper, number two is on up in the air. You see that's kind of obvious now. It's counterclockwise, so this should be S. 
Okay, practice again after pausing the video. Then the conclusion is the mirror image have opposite configuration which make perfect sense. So let me borrow the previous example. There. How would you assign the two chiral centers you have on this molecule? I hope you can notice that this and this, they are chiral centers. Then you have number one, the oxygen, and number two, carbon in the carbon, number four, hydrogen. On this carbon, you have oxygen, but that carbon has only three hydrogens, so number two and the three. And number four is up here, so in order to see that away from you, you have to be here and looking up. And number one is coming up in the air, so from the air, one, two, so it's already clockwise, right? So that should be R. And that one, you give number one for oxygen, then two, three carbons, and that carbon has oxygen on it, so that's two on this chiral center. And compare these two, obviously that one, that one has a carbon, but this one has only three hydrogens, so this is a heavier. So three and the four. So four is here, coming out, so you have to be under the table looking at it. So from behind, one, two, two is opposite of this direction in this case. So it is not R, but it's S. So same way, I hope you can do this. I'm not going to repeat. Please pause the video and get the answer. Did you get it? The answer here is S and that one is R. And if you remember the previous conclusion, the mirror image of the same chiral center with the same groups, they have opposite configuration. So when this is R, and remember this was an antiomer of this one, so it must be S. This carbon chiral center is S, then this chiral center should be R. How about diastromers? Okay, take a few seconds and try. Okay, I hope you got it. Remember this chiral center, we didn't make any change from the original, so it should be still R. And there we switch the group, so it's kind of mirror image, right? So mirror image of the S should be R. If you actually try, you will get those answers. So I hope you get the relationship between these RS uh, absolute configurations. Okay, so um, this is it for today. We have looked at a lot of um, you know, different ways of making similar structures called isomer with the various drawings. And this is essentially helping us to imagine molecule better when you do chemical reactions or trying to find out the properties of new compounds. So what's remaining on this series of the uh, structure video is for those optical isomers, we need to understand optical activity. Then, uh, we'll also have to look into the more detail with the quantum picture for structure. So, for that, We'll deal with the hybridization of orbitals. So I hope uh, this was helpful and uh, I'll see you on next 
video. Bye.